Navia can blast your enemies to death. And today, I'll be telling you how. Let's get into it. Four Piece Nighttime was tailor made for Navia. Massive geo damage bonus out of this one. Synergizes very well for two skill charges. Her most flexible set, great across both her DPS and sub DPS builds. Four Piece Mayonnaise Hunter also works like a charm. If gorgeous Farina's involved, that is. This is technically Navia's highest damaging set, but it will only work for carry Navia. Great damage, accessible, but not flexible. Four Piece Golden Troop is also fine. Navia's burst is a nuke. And this provides a neat amount of skill damage, but I wouldn't prioritize this set. Use it if you have it and replace it when you can. Decent, flexible placeholder. Yet two piece geo percent, two piece skill percent, and two piece attack percent will be fine as placeholders, Use until you can get a full four piece set. How about main stats? Simple, attack percent, damage percent, crit percent is the way to go. A very straightforward classic build. As for sub stats, go for crit rate damage, attack percent, ER percent, and attack. For the breakpoints, the usual 2k attack should do. The more the better, of course. 70 to 140 on a non crit weapon, and 70 plus to 200 plus if you are. As for ER, have a look at this sheet. And look at these artifact rankings to see where your personal choice lies. Now for our lovely blonde's weapons. What does Navia need to blast foes into next year? R1 Verdict. Her tailor-made signature weapon, naturally her best in slot, soloed crit stick too. It gets even more valuable with cons on Navia. But there's one tiny problem. At C0, it is 0.1% better than R5 Serpent Spine. It's hardly better at all at that point. Signature weapons are expensive. A battle pass is much cheaper. I like this. So if you can, get Serpent Spine instead. Even at R1, it's only 7.2% worse than Sig. R1 Beacon's your next best bet. Pretty good for Claymore users in general. Nice crit stick, and the passive works nicely with Navia. Once again, if you have this, you don't need Sig. R1 Redhorn's quite close too. Now that's a massive amount of crit. That's a lot of damage. That's where the main value of this choice comes from. Use it if you have it. Wolf's Gravestone is a safe bet. Navia scales on attack, and Gravestone provides it in spades. Passive does the same thing, but it's not insane on her. A choice which will at least be better than free to play options. R5 Black Cliff is worth considering too. Strong crit stick and can serve as free to plays. If you're patient, that is. R1 Black Cliff will be fine as well. Don't bother with talking stick. The new Fontaine Battle Plus Claymore has nothing on Serpent Spine. Both cost the same, but stick is way worse. What's your name? Me. Yes, you! I am me. He's me. And I'm you. And I'm about to your old ass. It'll work, yes, but don't buy Battle Pass for it when Spine is right there. Use it if you have it. That's an order. Tidal Shadow exists for free to plays. It's one of Navia's worst options, but it's your only fully free to play option. R5 is only 4% better than R1, so I'd hold on to your billets and only craft R1. Don't bother with Prototype Archaic. Navia's worst viable option. Tidal Shadow is a right there, my friend. If you're playing off field Navia, Sacrificial Greatsword works too if you're having ER issues. Otherwise, stick to the weapons mentioned. I heavily encourage buying at least one battle pass for Navia. Serpent Spine is worth your time and is a super viable option for her. Here's a sheet ranking Navia's best options. Pause if you'd like to read for longer. Hold it. If you're enjoying the video, why not consider liking and subscribing? Maybe even leaving a cool comment down below. If you do, Navia might invite you to the math macarons party. Yes, macarons party. Totally. Moving on. Who aids Navia's underground operations? Well, Navia has three main cores. The Navia Farina core, containing Navia, a geo unit, Farina, and a healer. The Navia sub DPS core, which has Navia, a geo unit, a sub DPS, and a healer or shielder. And yeah. Navia as a sub DPS. These are her teams where Navia is the sub DPS herself. Let's start with core one. Your best bet will be Navia, Albedo, or Zhongli, Farina, and Bennett. Bennett's a great buffer for the whole team. Navia scales on attack, so she'll appreciate the buff. Albedo deals considerable sub DPS while being nice for Crystallize too. His pull value definitely increased with Navia's release. Strong option, and one of Navia's best partners in crime. 
You can also use Zhongli instead. Nice res shred. You can run him on 4 piece tenacity of the Millilith 2 for extra buffing. Don't use his burst here, the animation takes too long in this team. Another very competent Navia pick. Approved. And the gorgeous Farina. Navia herself has no HP loss mechanics in her kit, but Bene healing the team will still let her generate fanfare. Her slow Hydra application allows for some nice crystallizes, and you'll have damage bonus galore. Not to mention high team wide DPS, since Farina does a lot of damage, and also makes Mayonnaise Hunter viable on Navia. Solid partner for her. Now for Core 2. The only difference is you use Yolan instead of Farina here. Yolan applies more Hydro than Farina too, so you can enjoy more crystallized shards. Her ramping damage bonus is also appreciated, and once again, big team DPR. So if you have an especially strong Yolan, this team's worth considering. And for Core 3, there's two places where Navia succeeds as a sub DPS. First, Neuvelette, Farina, Jean, and Navia. She'll generate a ton of crystallize with all the Hydra application in this team. Huge nuke numbers, and Farina's damage bonus is team wide. So Navia will still bust out some nice front load. She doesn't have to take a lot of field time either. Jean helps Farina cook fanfare, and Swirl Viridescent Venerer for the Hydra units. Stick her on Fav for some extra team wide energy. Neuvelet is actually a great candidate. The man doesn't have any set dedicated support, except Farina, who is already here. Even so, there's no must play Neuvelet team as of now, so sticking Navia in actually works pretty well with him. C1 will make this team easier to play. Linny, Bennett, Zhongli, and Navia works too. Here you drop Kazuha for Navia instead. Having Zhongli and Bennett here buffs both Navia and Linny, meaning both have an important part to play in this team. Navia can shoot off her nukes, deal crystallized madlis, and then let Linny profit. Another decent Navia sub DPS slot in. Awesome, we've assembled the Spina di Rosuna. Now it's time to see how talented Navia is. What fancy skills does our lady have? First turn normals. Four regular physical strikes in a row. How cool. Then for her skill. Oh boy, bear with me here. Every time you pick up a crystallized shard, Navia gets one charge of crystal shrapnel. We call these sharpies to keep things simple. Navia can have six sharpies at once. These sharpies last for 300 seconds at a time, not individually. If you have three sharpies, they will all disappear in 300 seconds. If you collect another sharpie, this refreshes. So if you have four and have 270 seconds left, collecting a fifth would push you back to 300 seconds. The first three sharpies you have will transform into bullets. No sharpies, five bullets. One sharpie, seven bullets. Two sharpies, nine bullets. Three sharpies, 11 bullets. Yes, they can hit in an AOE, but the more bullets that hit one enemy, the more damage that will happen. This is because it's not 11 bullets per enemy, it's 11 which splits between enemies. So Navia will be stronger against less enemies. Navia deals an extra amount of damage on top of that. This is 200% of the original damage dealt. Take a moment to drink water, and we continue. So that's if you get three out of six Sharpies. What if you get six out of six? The last three will increase the bullet's damage by 15% each. So that's a 45% total bonus. Her skill also has a hold. She sucks up crystallized shards around her, then shoots her bullets, which do the same thing as the press version. This ability has two charges. You shoot this every time you get six Sharpies on her. It deals Uisha aligned damage. Whew, good job for making it through that. Let's press on to her burst. She becomes American and shoots off a bunch of cannons. This deals chunky AoE Geo damage. And after the cast, the cannons stay on field for 12 seconds. They'll continue to shoot Geo damage at nearby enemies. When a cannon shoots an enemy, Navia gains one Sharpie. This can happen once every 2.4 seconds. Divide that by 12 and you can get five Sharpies out of her burst. Now for her Ascension passives. Her A1 lets Navia become an on-fielder. After using her skill, Navia gains a Geo infusion for four seconds. All her attacks will become Geo and can't get changed by C6 Bennett or Chong Yun, or anyone like them. And her normal attacks plus charge attacks have her damage increased by 40%. Good for DPS focused Navia teams. Her A4 encourages team variety. For every Pyro, Cryo, Electro, and Hydro, Navia gains a 20% attack bonus. 
this caps at two units, so that's 40% attack you can get out of this. Navia's best teams want at least two colorful units anyway, so these are free stats, really. What about talent priorities? Simple. Navia's skill is the main meat of her kit. Level it up first. Her burst cost is cheap and it deals some solid numbers, get it as well. Navia's normals are worth looking at too, but if you're playing her as a quick swap sub DPS, you can ignore them. Cool, but two skill charges? How in the world do you apply this? Well, let's take a look at Navia's combos. Navi is easy enough to play. Shoot off her burst, then her skill, and normal away. Cancel her fourth normal attack as it takes a long time to carry out, and then follow up with N2 afterwards. E, rinse, and repeat. You can also squeeze in one more E, N3, and 2 combo, but that's hard to do if you need more than one rotation done, so use this for the most efficiency possible. Speaking of efficiency, want your bomb to become a weapon of mass destruction? Let's turn your Navia from a level 1 thug to a level 100 Mafia boss. Viscon helps out Navia's energy needs, which aren't all that high to begin with. Don't go after Viscon on its own. You get a free fully stacked Mayo Hunter, 36% crit rate, cool stuff, and some more burst damage as well. If you want any improvement to Navia beyond C0, stop here. Plus 3 to that nuclear skill, good stuff. Not a huge con on its own. 20% Geo Res Shred from her burst. Eh. <sighs> This is Zhongli's Res Shred locked behind a C4. Really not that good for a C4. Don't go for it on its own. Very mid. A plus 3 upgrade to her burst. Mid con on its own. Don't pick it up if you're not after C6. Gives Navia a buttload of crit damage and makes Sharpie stacks easier to deal with. Of course, this is her best con. Not the strongest C6 out there, but it works. If you ask me, don't get Navia cons. C0 with Serpent Spine will be enough for you. C2 at most. But really, I'd say C6 or go home. Complete at C0. Well, Navi is a splendid Geo DPS, definitely the most powerful Geo unit we have right now. If you're after a unique and intuitive playstyle, pick her up. Definitely commendable for a hyper carry, and definitely cheaper than most in my opinion, as she only demands one battle pass and flexible five stars. Who knows what sub DPS potential she'll have in the future? Her shelf life will definitely be better than most DPSs. She overcame being Geo for sure. If you're a Geo fan and have Navius supports, I'd say pick her up. You won't regret it. Hopefully this video was able to get your Navia blasting enemies into next Tuesday. Well then, this has been Juice, signing out. And I wish you all a day full of vigor and adventure.